Hey guys, Jerry Mitchell here. I want to share with you some of the things I do to my modern sporting rifle for competition. Uh, also, if I'm going to use it to warm and hunt with it or just enjoyment of shooting, take the recoil out of it. I know you're saying, I know what you're thinking, 556, 223 doesn't recoil much. It kind of give you an idea. The standard platform, like you see it right here, like this M&P, it's pretty much a classic uh, design and it's uh, manufactured. It uses all GI standard parts. Uh, this one has a carbine gas system. This is something I, wa I want to discuss with you. Uh, what you can do to make the gun more easy to shoot and more and more repetitive. Uh, these are play guns. When I go out and play and I shoot competition, they have to work 100%, but I'm still playing. If I wanted a duty gun or something that's going to function when it's minus 40 degrees uh, up to 120 degrees, the way you see it right here is going to be in its most reliable state. It's not really shooter friendly. It's going to recoil a lot. I want to weenie it down as much as I can. So my competition gun, it's full weenie. I want to shoot and have fun and just less amount of recoil, read my shot, shoot fast and go home and just have a good time. This is something I want to work with. So that's the difference. Got to give you an idea on the gas, on the gas system. We'll start on the gas system itself. This has a carbine gas system. If you come here and look, you notice this tube is a lot shorter than this one. This is a mid-gas tube, and this is a rifle length. I like the longer one. I like an 18-inch barrel with a rifle uh, gas system on it. And you could also have a, adjustable gas blocks, and we're going to get into that in just a second. Most all military or law enforcement rifles like this, or standard production MSRs, really over-cycle. And they have to do that to, to, re to meet this criteria of extremely cold environment and extremely hot environments. So they overcycle. They, they're meant to be able to shoot really dirty in hostile environments. I'm not that guy. I'm having fun. I have control over my equipment. It's going to be clean. I'm going to shoot it pretty much at, at one temperature range. And that's something you want to think about when you set your rifle up. We will, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So my gun is set up with an adjustable gas system and a muzzle brake and a magnetic buffer. I prefer the longer gas system. To me, the gun is smoother and the gun cycles a little bit more consistent with a broad range of ammunition. And that's something you want to think about anytime you modify this with different barrels, uh, port, uh, gas tubes, uh, bolt weights. Standard rifles are like this, is made for standard NATO ammunition. And the way you can tell if it's a NATO round, you can look at the head stamp. You see a circle with an X in it. And that means the chamber pressure is going to be to that specification. And it's made exactly to fit this platform. If you kept this ammunition with a good magazine, you'll shoot this thing until you get tired of putting ammunition in it. What happens to us guys is we want to make it better. We want to re-engineer something that's really truly spectacular and put some nickel and dime parts in it. So you want to be aware to choose your parts correctly and just don't waste a lot of money. So I like long gas system. I find the gun shoots a little bit softer. It seems to be more flexible with 223 and most every 556 ammo I put in it. Uh, this chamber is a match chamber. It's not a NATO chamber, so it'll shoot either one consistently and more accurate. That's something I'm wanting. And I want to have a muzzle brake on it. There's a lot of energy being expelled out of that muzzle. And I want to use it to keep the rifle flat and actually pull the rifle forward. If you look at a standard issue gun like you would have, say, a military or a police issue, it has a, it has a flash suppressor. And the whole idea of this little gadget on the end is when you shoot it in low light, it keeps the muzzle flash to a minimum. So what they've done to these, this is like a third, fourth generation flash suppressor. And you notice on the bottom, it's completely solid. And that's for two reasons. One is uh, signature. If I'm shooting really low, I say I'm shooting prone right here, and it's a very dusty environment, it's not going to kick up the same amount of dust as a birdcage that is completely perforated. And it also, a secondary function of this little piece being solid is when you fire that round as the bullet exits the bore, uh, this gas is being thrust directly on this shoulder here, and it's going to push the muzzle down. It's kind of like a little muzzle brake primary function is flash suppression and not a muzzle brake. So it's kind of a combination. You can, you can look at this as a soft combination of a muzzle brake flash suppressor. I'm not interested in that. 
I'm not going to be fighting at night. I'm having fun. I'm on the range. I want to weenie it up. I want a compensator. And you'll notice this one is one of my design. Uh, when I first started shooting multi-gun back in the 80s, there was not many muzzle devices out there. So I came up with one. I worked with, I don't know how many different manufacturers that I bought and tried. And I went out and I, this is kind of interesting if you want to hear the story behind this. This is 920. And the reason it's 920 thousand diameter, I went into Clark Custom Guns and had a lot of cut, oh, had a lot of cut off 1022 barrels. When they would shorten the barrel, they would go throw in a, in a scrap. And I would go in the scrap pile and get these little pieces of metal, 1022 barrels, and drill them out and do the ports and thread it and go out and, and play with them. And this was the final design. It took about a week and a bunch of ammunition to come up with this. It looks really simple. We're going to go out on the range. And I'm going to show you what to look for when you buy a muzzle brake. And what not to look for going on down to the rear here the boat i run a standard boat with a cop and adjustable gas system and if you want to run a lightweight boat what you want to remember when you change the weight of the boat this is a really good one this was made by jp enterprises uh it's considerably lighter than a standard weight boat and the whole idea behind a lighter weight boat is when this boat goes in its full cycle and it reciprocates to the to the rear it comes to a dead stop so the lighter this is the less impact you're going to have to the rear of the gun the less muzzle rise and the less disturbance you're going to have on the sight but when you change the weight of the boat you change the velocity of the boat so without an adjustable gas system you can over cycle the gun and it's going to recoil just as much as a standard boat so when you have a lightweight boat it's good to get adjust, uh, an adjustable gas system to go with it i've gone what I have now, I use a standard boat with this magnetic buffer. This is something else you want to consider. There's hydraulic buffers, and I, and I market a magnetic buffer. And the whole idea behind this, when that boat comes to the rear, during the recall, then during the uh, operation, the cycle to pick up the next cartridge, when this impacts the back of the receiver extension, this acts as a shock absorber. You notice the more you push on it, the harder it gets it's like a shock absorber on a car and what this does it takes a lot of that secondary thump out of the gun so if i'm making a really precision shot say at 400 yards on a 10 inch target and i cook one off and i don't really know what the wind's doing i can usually pretty much stay on that optic and i can read it without this you get a jar and your platform might move 10 12 15 inches and it's hard to actually read your misses so with this and also shooting like a plate rack at 100 yards makes a huge difference on how the gun handles in between shots, stays flatter, just makes it so much more conducive to fast, repetitive, accurate fire. Okay, so we, we talked about the bolt a little bit, talk about the buffer. I use a standard M4 uh, carbine spring, change the buffer out, put the magnetic buffer. I use a standard bolt, lightweight bolts are good if you have an adjustable gas system. I like the long gas system. So what we're going to do is just take all this out on the range a little bit. I'm going to take this one and shoot it for you uh, compared to my competition gun. And this is something else I've been playing with. Uh, this adjustable stock. Usually on all my guns, I run Magpul. This is one I've been introduced to. It's not a Magpul product. Uh, it's a Daniel Horner stock. And uh, I keep an eye on Daniel Horner. He's one of the best three gunners ever lived. And he's, he was shooting this stock. So it made me realize if Daniel's shooting something, I think I'm going to look at it too. And what this stock design does, if you look at it from the rear, being offset like this, it helps mitigate the muzzle flip to the right if you're right-handed. And if you're left-handed, it would do the same, but in the opposite direction. So a little bit of offset really means a difference on how that muzzle reacts on the target. You actually see it really profoundly, like on a plate rack at 100 yards. I have a plate rack where I go out and shoot. And it takes about, I don't know, 50% of the whip out of it to the right. So I'm playing with that. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. But as it looks, I think I'll probably take it to the world match this way. Magpro is what's on every gun I own. Uh, like, again, they're one of my sponsors. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's take all this out to the range. And let's do a little shooting and see what it looks like. All right, we're out on my range. It's, I, uh, let me start that over. Okay, guys, we're out on the range here. This is my own private range. I want to give you a demonstration on what a muzzle brake 
and how it works and a good visual demonstration of it. If you research John Browning when he saw his brother shooting a lever action when he was prone and he saw the grass moving in front of him, he realized all that energy was being wasted and he came up with a gas operated uh, lever gun. So this is a visual on what's actually coming out that muzzle and how you can use it to keep, the, to keep your rifle on target longer. So I've got the standard 16 inch and what I'm shooting for ammunition today is Hornady Frontier. It's their 55 grain NATO. It's an extremely accurate bullet, by the way. They hold their 55 ball round to a higher accuracy standard than I think just about any manufacturer out there. So I got a 16 inch barrel, one round in the mag. And if you watch that sheet of paper there, you ready? A lot of energy went down range. So we're going to flag it, pick up one with a comp on it. And the whole idea behind a good compensator is it keeps the muzzle flat, but it also is actually pulling the rifle forward. All right. Got our little line here. You ready? Here we go. Hardly anything. That's a good way of looking at it. A good visual. So all that energy, instead of being expelled toward the target, is actually diverted to the side. And what you want to see on a compensator, a lot of guys make them big and bulky and all that adds is weight to the front. After so many ports, it's lost its efficiency. It's going to only scavenge so much gas and after that it's just window dressing. So if you, if you got a big heavy cop, you just might be adding weight instead of cop effect. Something to think about when you buy one. Let's move back and shoot offhand. All right, we're back at about 90 yards. I've got the same Hornady NATO 55 ball. I've got five rounds in each magazine. And what I want to do is got a 12 inch gong down there. I'm going to get the camera guy, camera person, to come behind me and look over my shoulder. I want you to watch the end of my muzzle when I shoot one with the compensator, with the hydraulic buffer, I mean with the magnetic buffer, or one with a buffer, compared to a stock 16-inch short carbine gas system standard rifle. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with the uh, competition gun. Come here close, guys. I want to tell you something. When I watch all these videos and people loading their equipment, nothing really gets under my skin, I'm going to say it nicely, as someone taking a rifle and putting a mag in it and having it like this and drop the bolt. How high of a berm would it take to stop that round if that gun should fire? You're not going to stop it. So have some common sense and some courtesy to the range owner that when you're going to load your rifle, pistol, shotgun, that when you do it, you point it toward a berm. How, how knowledgeable is that? All right. I got off my high horse. Let's shoot some steel. Watch the muzzle. <laughs> I had to say that, by the way. All right, here we go. All right. So what you think? We're going to go ahead and flag it. Flag is your friend. Drop the magazine. Standard rifle. Great gun. All right, safety on, charge it, you want a berm. I'm going to put both of these down on this one. All right, here we go. Wow. <laughs> wow, you should see what I'm seeing in the scope. I feel like I'm shooting a 308. But anyway, that's just a, a brief rundown on how to modify equipment. The other thing I'll tell you, I'm going to go in depth on another video and show you how to actually tune an adjustable gas system for your ammunition. But I'll tell you this right up front. If you modify your gun, I'm lucky enough to live on a property where I can take my platform and throw it in the freezer. I'll load a magazine, <laughs> throw it in the freezer, come back out, take it and shoot it. If it doesn't function at that setting, I'm not going to take it to a match. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Get some.